Good afternoon, East Coasters, and good morning to our friends on the West Coast. Welcome to Triple Seat University Remote. My name is Tim. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, full disclosure, we usually love to take this program on the road, but uh, we can't do that today. But Sarah and I are equally as excited to share our infinite knowledge on Triple Seat with all of you uh, new users, uh, with first steps for new accounts, which is today's topic. So thank you uh, for joining us. So real quick, uh, before we get started, just some brief introductions. My name is Timothy Seberg. I am the National Accounts Manager with the Triple Seat team. I service uh, and have great relationships with all of our national accounts across the country. My uh, entry into the hospitality industry is unique, as I'm sure it is for a lot of you. I started my career in an advertising marketing uh, communications company within Boston, but found myself yearning to be in uh, hospitality and ultimately taking care of people. So I made uh, a left turn pivot uh, about 12 years ago, and I went back to school to get my degree in culinary hospitality management and was fortunate enough to join uh, a remarkable event catering team here in Boston, where I managed over uh, 10 salespeople for over a decade. So I definitely understand the struggles and the challenges that come with being an event manager and a salesperson in the hospitality industry. So I'm hoping I can not only share uh, my triple seat knowledge with you, but also any strategy or keys to success when building and managing a hospitality team. So that's a little bit about me. We'd love to toss it over to Sarah to introduce herself and go over today's syllabus. Thanks, Tim. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, it's great to be with you all today. So I'm one of the regional account managers. I oversee New England plus some Southern states such as Tennessee and Virginia. Um, my love of hospitality actually started at a very young age. Um, I was born and raised in Vermont, and my mom had her own wedding cake business and then further began be teaching for hospitality for high school students. So um, I was fully immersed in the hospitality world from the start. Um, and because of that, I decided to study it um, in college. So uh, after I gained my bachelor's degree, I pursued my dreams of moving to New York City and I did that soon after, and I started my career as an event manager for a slew of different venues. Um, I started at a large music venue slash winery, which was really fun and cool. I had a lot of experience there that I learned a lot of different things about wine that I never knew I would know, so that was really cool. Um, and then I moved to a small uh, restaurant group, the New York City, and then later to a national hotel collection. So it was really great to see, you know, the different perspectives from the various types of venues I was a part of, and it was just a great, great experience. So in addition to that, I actually use Triple C in a lot of my positions. So um, I can definitely relate to the woes of starting and learning a new software, also while juggling clients all day, every day. So it's a pleasure to be with you all, and we're excited to provide these helpful triple seat resources for you today. So let's jump in. So you've been onboarded by your customer success team member from our team and given a login for your triple seat account. So where do you go from here? Um, so triple seat, along with any new software, is going to be overwhelming and it's always best just to start small. It's better to learn the tools that you will be using more frequently rather than trying to understand everything that the tool can offer because then you'll just get overwhelmed and stressed out and we wanna prevent that at all costs, of course. So start weaving Triple C into your daily task and processes, especially for myself when I was an event manager, I always had Triple C up as an open tab and that always helped me, you know, talk with between the pages and really helped me train my brain to be like, okay, Triple C is your Bible. It's your event Bible. You got to look at that and refer to it at all times. Um, so today, um, Tim and I are going to cover the top questions we receive from newly onboarded customers, along with some helpful tips and tricks. So we're going to go over my profile settings, user roles, drop down settings, the power of lead forms, and best practices for closing out events. 
Learning these basic best practices will set you up for success and be the foundation of your Triple C account. And bouncing over to Tim to start us off. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Quick question, though. Are you a baker like your mom? Do you make cakes? I do not bake at all. <laughs> <laughs> I actually prefer cooking. I just like, you know, you can you don't have to use measuring tools with cooking. but yeah, It's a little bit more uh, at your whim. I know. I, I mean, I hold it to her, though. Like, I couldn't do it. <laughs> So just one quick housekeeping item before we get started. If you have any questions, and we absolutely love questions, feel free to type them into the question uh, section within the presentation. And we have Chris um, standing by and Lauren standing by. Shout out to them that we'll be answering throughout the presentation. So we're going to go ahead and turn off our cameras just so we have the best experience so you can see our screens. Because we're actually going to jump right in to Triple C. So this is our test site. We call it Blue Water Restaurant here at Triple C. And this is going to be the foundation for us today uh, to go through some hints, best practices, and some pro tips uh, as a new user. So the first thing I want to point out, uh, and I get this question all the time from my new users, is how do I access my profile and individual settings related to their account? Well, there's two ways to do this. Uh, one is by clicking up uh, on your name. You see Tim Seberg up here with a photo to access your profile. Or you can always scroll down underneath uh, settings and access your profile that way. But today, we'll click right on my name. So once we're in here, you'll see the first tab that we're brought to is the My Account tab. And this is kind of your boilerplate information on who you are as a user. So of course, your name, your last name, your title within your organization. Uh, really import important to point out that your email address, this is the email where all of your guest discussions and notifications will be sent. So you'll wanna make sure that's updated. And obviously you wanna make sure you have your phone number in here as well. Definitely pro tip from a uh, client success perspective is to have your image uploaded to your Triple Seed account just to help further build that relationship when you're talking to your customers remotely. If you ever need to change your password, uh, I do this often throughout the year, honestly, on all of my internet accounts, uh, you can do this right here, entering a new password and then confirming. A good pro tip too, for any of you that manage uh, multiple uh, groups within Triple C, if you ever wanna change the default site, default site that you enter into when you log into Triple C, you can do that right here. So you see as an admin, I have access to our North region, our South region, our hotels, and our uh, London location. And wouldn't that be fun to go to right now? But we'll change it over to South region. From a calendar perspective, I know I spent a lot of time in my calendar looking at events and what's on the horizon. If you ever wanna change the default setting, you can do that in here as well. Another great tip, and I learned this late into being a triple seat user, and I wish I knew it sooner, was the ability to reorganize my event bookings and lead tabs. Uh, you have the options down here. We can reorganize to our liking as a user on what I like to see first. Payments is really important to me as a sales director, so I like to have that at the top. And maybe notes isn't something that I need to see all the time, so I can click that off. Really important to note that anytime you do make any changes with, within your profile is to click the update button. So that locks it in and saves it. Also, anything that you do within the My Profile section is going to only impact your Triple C account and no other users. So bouncing over to probably one of my favorite features within Triple C is called Digest Emails. And this is the second tab here. Digest emails are essentially an email notification uh, set up to your liking and a schedule that works for you to see relevant information that is on the horizon for either the day ahead or the week ahead or the month ahead. So I definitely encourage you as a new user to set up and to subscribe to a daily Digest email. Uh, I'm an early riser, so I want to edit mine, maybe to deliver every day in my inbox at 5 a.m., and you know what? Only today's information is important to me. But tasks are super important. 
you can see I have a lot of outstanding tasks here and I need to stay on top of that. And the Daily Digest will help do that. Another cool thing about Daily Digest is the ability to report back to you on any custom fields that you have within Triple C. And I can do that here and select, I wanna see the balance due dates on the horizon. So let's say daily information is a little bit too much for you and you prefer to see it on a weekly basis. We can handle that too within Triple C. So you'll wanna unsubscribe to your daily digest and you can simply add a weekly digest. And this email, let's have deliver maybe every Sunday at the end of the day. And I wanna see my events for the next 24 days out. And I can even then group them by location, if I'm managing multiple locations, um, and by date too. And you can add as many Weekly Digest emails as you desire. Sarah, did you all use Weekly Digest uh, emails or Daily Digest emails? We used um, the Daily Digest actually for our morning meetings every day. We would have like a 9 a.m. you know weekly meeting um, that we would just work off of from the Daily Digest email. It was really nice to see all the events in one on one piece of paper pretty much and consolidated. So that was a nice reference to go to. Totally. And we had uh, Monday morning BEO meetings and just the ability to have Triple C actually do the work for me and yeah. send over all the events. And all I had to do was hit print or bring my laptop to the meeting. Uh, it was such a time saver. Definitely. Yeah, so the emails we love. Mm -hmm. Section under my profile that I want to call out is the email templates. You may be familiar with templates when you were setting up your uh, Triple C account with our onboarding team, but you can even personalize further by setting up templates that are only relevant to you and your work, uh, workflow throughout the uh, day. So as a sales director, answering leads is really important to me. And I know that when a lead comes in, I typically ask the same questions over and over again to my potential clients. And honestly, I'm on the road a lot. I'm visiting my venues. I'm visiting my parties. And I find myself answering emails from my phone all the time. And typing on my little phone screen is a hassle. So a great trick and tip around this is to create uh, templates for quick response. So you'll see I have one in here uh, for a, a birthday party. We do a lot of birthdays at Blue Water. And if I go into it, You'll see that I use um, all the different uh, lead form name, the company, the date as merge fields within the subject. And then I also use a merge field to call out the potential client's name. And I have my you know most asked questions already typed out, ready to go. So I can create as many templates as I want that are individual to me as a user and use those when answering leads and uh, actual event discussions as well. Next section that I wanna jump over is to notifications. I get questions a lot about how to control my notifications. You know, we're all bombarded throughout the day and into the night with social media notifications, email notifications, and sometimes we wanna tailor the delivery uh, to fit our needs. It's definitely best practice from a Triple C perspective to have any notifications come to both your Triple C app and your email. But let's say as uh, a sales director, I maybe don't need to see a notification on contacts within my Triple C app. I only want those to come to my email. And uh, online payments are super important to me and I want those front and present in my email. So I can tailor the notifications based on my needs. And of course, you always definitely want to hit update once you make any changes. So that's it for the My Profile section on what I wanted to talk about today. So I'm going to toss it over to Sarah, who is going to talk about user roles, which is also a uh, unique and strong feature within Triple C. Yes, thank you, Tim. So one of the questions I get pretty frequently from new users is how do I limit access for some of my staff? So that's actually going to take place in your user roles here. So this is in our settings page. So if you choose to add any new users, say you wanted to add a new event manager or some uh, new kitchen staff, in the users here is where you will actually add their information, like their email, their password, anything that's personal to them. 
but every user will need to be assigned a user role. So that's what we're going to be discussing now. So I'm gonna click into user roles. And lucky for most of you, um, every user, um, this setting is only available, available for admins. So you don't have to worry about other users going in and altering what you have set up. Triple C actually automatically provides seven different user roles for you that you're more than welcome to add or delete or edit also as you wish. So some of the user roles that are automatically provided are admin and chef. We also have other user roles such as general user, users for host and hostess, as well as a junior admin. In our Blue Water site here, we actually have some different user roles that we've added. So here is where you can delete. If you don't want all user roles, you can delete them by the red trash can. And if you want to add a new user role, you can do so by this button up here. So I'm actually going to check off the chef user role. So I'm going to go in here. And this is where you can edit this specific user role. So the name here, you can edit within the field if you want to rename it. We also have an admin setting, which actually provides all accessibility throughout Triple C. So if you check this off, it automatically provides accessibility for everything. But for a chef, you probably don't want them to see everything. So for instance, we have our setting preferences down here. If you only wanted the chef to see lead forms for any reason, you can check that off only. Or if you don't want them to see any settings at all, you can just leave it checked off. If you wanted to provide any users to edit user or user roles, you can check these off. For accounts and contacts and events, we actually have these drop down options. So we have no accessibility all the way to administer. So administering provides you accessibility to pretty much do anything within the events. And then no access is obviously no access. So um, you could do anything between view, create, edit and delete. Also providing limitation between the different fields of the event details page. Leads is a great option. I always liked to use this, um, this option for hosts or hostesses. So if you have someone walking into the restaurant and they're inquiring about an event right on the spot, your host or hostess would be able to add a lead for you right into triple C. So this is where I would select the submit leads for the host and hostess user role. You can also select off if you want to show the calendar or not. And then also with documents. So we're in the chef user role right now. So most likely they'll only need to see the kitchen sheet, maybe the menu and banquet event order. So I'm only gonna limit those layouts to that chef user role, but if you want to provide all layouts, of course, you can select all of them. And this actually brings up a funny story from when I was an event manager. Um, one day, I came into work, um, and I looked at my calendar. My calendar was pretty much the, every, the only thing I was really looking at throughout the day. And I noticed that I usually have Sunday as the starting day of my week, but Monday was shifted over. And then Sunday bounced all the way over here. And I was like, this isn't how I set up my calendar to look like. So I was like, what's going on here? So I actually, I investigated, I emailed everyone on the team. I was like, who is messing up the calendar in triple C? And I actually found out that one of the chefs didn't realize that he was changing the calendar settings and didn't know that it was changing for everyone else. So what do I do? I go in his user roles and immediately take off the settings accessibility for them so they wouldn't have to mess around with settings anymore. So my lesson learned there was make sure you're picky with who you have access the settings. And furthermore, another best practice we always like to recommend for new users is to have admin privileges only for one or two team members just to alleviate the confusion there. Sarah, I can completely understand where you're coming from. You know, we love our culinary and chef friends, but oh, definitely providing those uh, those access levels and user roles is a great tip, especially for, for new tri triple C users. Just double check who has access to what information. 
Absolutely. You'll, or else you'll learn the hard way, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> so um, actually, another question we get asked frequently is, how do I access or edit my drop-down fields? So drop-down fields are different fields you'll see throughout your triple seed account. These can be anywhere with payments, new lead forms, or event details page. So to, add, to access, you're going to go to your settings, into preferences, and you'll see a drop downs tab. And you'll immediately see the different drop downs that Triple C provides to you. So these are all different fields that you'll see, like for uh, event types, you'll see that when you're converting leads to events, Lead sources, which is one of my favorites, you'll see when you're adding a new lead or when you see leads come in. So you'll see actually a few leads here where there's a little lock icon next to them. That just means Triple C provided these to you, ready to use. Unfortunately, you're not able to delete or edit them, but they're there. Furthermore, you have these other options below where you can edit. So you can delete by the little red trash can of course you can use the cursor to rearrange the order you can also edit within the field to edit the text for each field item and then of course at the bottom we have another add another field if you'd like a great example i like to use for adding different fields for lead sources is say you have an email blast that you're sending out to your past clients and you're offering 15% off and you want to track which leads came in from that email blast. This is where you can add, you know, uh, promo email, click update. And then when you're entering in a new lead or you see a new lead come in, you can head right to the new, the lead sources here select the drop down, and there's a few different options here, but we have like holiday promo 2020, which we had entered in here, and the promo email I had entered. The best thing about these drop downs actually is um, that they're all reportable. So for this example, we would be able to run a report by how many leads came in from clients who received that promo email. Another way to track leads after sending out a marketing email is by creating a separate lead form. And Tim, I believe you have some helpful tips on this topic. Yes, 100%. Uh, I'm going to bounce back over to my screen and my blue water. So leads. <laughs> this is a golden subject for me as a former salesperson. I encourage my sales team on a daily basis that any lead you get as a salesperson is a gift and should be treated uh, with proper respect from the initial outreach to the close of the actual event. Uh, Triple C provides an, an amazing platform for you to get leads and drive more revenue for your organization. So when you're on your Triple C dashboard, you're going to see this new lead section uh, it's front and present, so you can't miss it on a daily base. And you see, I have no new leads. Well, that's an issue. We need some business coming through the doors. So if I can offer one tip and suggestion, it would be as a new user to go in and make sure that the lead form that our team set up for you in the onboarding process has been uploaded and is actively working on your website because there's no greater way to uh, get new business than it magically to appear directly in your triple seed account. So if you ever need to check on uh, your lead forms and maybe your web developer needs the uh, codes to put it on your website, we head down to settings. And then right here to the lead form section. And you'll see in blue water, we have a ton of different lead forms in here. And I wanna show you three today, three that I think can be really helpful. The first is just gonna be your general lead form that's hosted on your website. If you ever need, like I said, the setup codes for any of your lead forms, you simply click setup codes and they're all right here for you. If you ever need help on which setup code do I send to my web development team, just ask your account manager, or click the help and question tab up here and we'll direct you in the proper uh, direction. 
So let's take care of the fact that I have no leads coming into my dashboard. So I confirmed that my lead form is now up on my website, Blue Water. And now we found that uh, our friend Cooper Smith is entering a lead from the guest perspective uh, into our website. And you can see that he's gonna host a 40th birthday party uh, coming up fairly soon here. And it's gonna go well into the night and for a hundred people, geez, isn't that amazing? <laughs> so once he confirms that he's not a robot for security purposes, bandwidth seems to be a little slow today. I think I got all of them. Yep. Cooper will submit that lead form. He'll automatically get a, a confirmation that the request is received. You can edit this uh, comment right in those lead form settings that I showed you. Uh, so I know when I was a catering sales manager, 24 hours was too long for me to get back to potential clients. So I would probably change this to 12 hours. So let's hop back over to our triple seat site. And you'll see now that Cooper Smith's lead has now been dropped in our new leads. I see automatically that it's a 40th birthday party. Best practice within triple seat is definitely to convert this new lead into hopefully an event, but at the very least, uh, a new contact and account just so you can always go back and reach out to Cooper uh, if you know he wants to host a party in the future. But let's say that I see it's a 40th birthday party and I know that I'm gonna have my initial birthday questions that I need to send off from Cooper or send over to Cooper. If I click on action and then comment, I'm taken right into the lead and right down into the general uh, discussion with the guest. And here's where those uh, email templates that I showed you earlier really come in handy, especially when you're on the go on your phone or maybe your iPad. So instead of typing my comments to Cooper, I'm gonna use the email editor. And I don't need Sean and Ann to receive this, but I do need Cooper to get the message. And I'm gonna come over here to your email templates and go down to that birthday one that we set up earlier. You'll see all of my questions are already typed out here. We have Cooper's name in the subject line using merge fields, the date of his party, the time of his party. So it looks super customized and like it just isn't an email uh, coming from you know a robot or a computer. But let's say I know I definitely wanna send Cooper over a picture of what the venue space looks like. I can come up here to my images, which are saved in my file library. Select the image of the room Cooper's gonna celebrate in and insert it right into the email, send that off to Cooper and begin that conversation and converting that lead into an actual party and uh, revenue for Blue Water Restaurant. So the next lead form that I wanna show you uh, is really cool because honestly, if you're not using Triple C, you would probably have to reach out to your you know, web developing team or your marketing team to set up and design uh, a custom form for a promotion that you're doing. So in Blue Water, uh, last holiday season, we did a big push for holiday parties and we went into our settings and created a lead form specifically for holiday parties. So if a user fills this lead form out and it gets placed right into our lead form section, we're gonna know automatically that this was a holiday party 2020 request, and we can go back even and report on how many holiday party leads did we get and how many holiday party leads actually converted into an event. And again, let me bounce back over to Triple Seat and I'll show you in settings where that lead form is. Oops. So you'll see our holiday party seasonal uh, promo lead form is right here. I can go into the setup codes and I can 
insert this URL right into an email campaign too, which is the last lead form that I want to show you. So a lot of us have databases from years past of clients that have booked with us. What a better way to get new business to reach out to those old clients and see if they want to rebook uh, for the year ahead. So it's great to use an email service to create a custom email marketing campaign, build a custom lead form within Triple C, and then actually send those lead forms out to your potential or your past guests that will hopefully rebook with you. All they have to do is click on the city or the location that they're interested in. They'll be taken right to the lead form where uh, you can book another party. So that's all I wanted to show you on lead forms, but I'm gonna to toss it back over to Sarah uh, to talk about actually closing out events and best practices around uh, that. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. And I got to mention, when I was an event manager, I wish I knew that I could create more lead forms because there were definitely areas of opportunity where I could have <laughs> offered like different promos or like a holiday special. And it would have been nice to be able to track that with different lead forms for sure. And definitely the ability to customize those lead forms too within the settings and, you know, really tailor it and tailor the messaging towards your clientele is a great tip as well. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Um, so we're gonna jump ahead a little bit um, with a common question we get about events. So a common question that comes across a lot is best practice for closing out events. So right now I'm on our calendar and we have an Oscars watch party on the 25th. So I'm gonna go in here and before we dive into this, I did want to mention the statuses that Triple C provides you. So these are automatically already inside of the software for you. They are uneditable, but they are free to use at your disclosure. So we have prospect, which usually means you're in conversation with the client. They're not ready if they're willing to move forward. Tentative meaning they want to move forward and you've sent a contract waiting for signature and deposit. We have definite, meaning the event is definitely happening. The client has signed the contract and put down a deposit. And then close is the status we'll discuss today. So the way I used to close out events as, event, as an event manager um, is I'd go into my calendar the night after a few events had taken place and look if to see if there were any outstanding balances. So when I was actually an event manager again, we had a bar and consumption option um, for the bar that a lot of our clients like to use. It always seemed more appealing because they're just paying for what is consumed. So that was always a really popular option. Um, Tim, did a lot of your clients enjoy that as well? They did. In addition to our open bar package, a lot of them started to switch to the consumption. And I think this is where you're going is updating those numbers the next day. Absolutely. So in this case, the Oscars watch party, we're going to jump ahead the day after the event. And I have a big fat bill waiting on my desk for my bartender with an open tab for the amount of alcohol or drinks that they consumed. So I'm actually going to go into the docs tab here. I'm going to click edit. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the beverage section. And I already have beverages on consumption listed in here so the bartender knew what their bar package was. So now I'm gonna add the price in of what they consumed. So let's just say it was $500. So we're gonna update. And now I'm going to want to settle the outstanding balance that was consumed from last night. So I'm going to go to our payments tab. And you'll see now that the total is inflated by the amount that was consumed plus fees. So now I'm gonna want to charge the card on file. So last night, Jennifer Aniston, who's hosting this party, she's like, just charge the card on file with whatever everyone's consuming. So cool, that gives me the go ahead for today to charge the card. So I'm going to add a payment, save and pay. And our test site actually has one of our credit card integrations already set up. 
So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if you click on credit card at the top, you'll be able to see any cards that were authorized. And this is actually a fake card, so it's not actually gonna go through successfully, but this is what it will look like on your end for any, any other credit cards that are authorized. So I'm gonna click Submit. And then once that goes through, the payment will be finalized. And because of that, I'm gonna to wanna to change the status of the event to closed. And update. So I, I loved the closed status as an event manager. It really helped decipher the events between past and future, especially when it came down to reporting Meaning if I left past events in the definite status, that told me right away, oh, I'm still waiting on payment because I haven't closed them out yet. Um, so that was a really great way to stay on top of my clients as well for if I was waiting on payment or if they needed to add a new card. Um, and something I also want to mention with the credit card authorization integration is if the card doesn't go through and there's an error message, your client will automatically get an email saying the card hasn't gone through. Do you please reach out and reauthorize a new card or try to figure out a different way to charge the event for? So now that the event is closed out, I want to send a little thank you note. I feel like clients always appreciated that. So I'm going to go into my discussions. Go into the guest general discussion here. Use email editor. I don't want Ann Lee to receive this, just Jennifer and me. And I actually created a template within my mo my profile, which was discussed earlier. So I created a template for thank you following the event. And here is the auto populated message. So you'll actually see a hyperlink here for a survey. A lot of our clients in Triple C like to send out surveys following events asking you know, their guests, how was service? How was the food? And whatever they else what they wanna know. So you can actually add a hyperlink right into the template here to send over to the client. What's also great and something I always like to do is resending the contract layout to the client, just saying, hey, this is your new contract and it's reflecting the amount charged for the beverage on consumption. So then I would send that. Another thing I have had set up is if I change any events to closed, I'll have an automatic task. So I don't have one set up right now, but so I had an automatic task set up for myself to reach back out a year later. I always like reaching out, seeing if anybody wants to rebook. So if you had an automatic task and the trigger was the event is changed to closed, then you'll see a task on the task tab here and you'll also receive an email. And what better clients than repeat clients, right, Tim? <laughs> 100%, you know, it's funny, before Triple C, I used to print out uh, reports from past years, highlight uh, different events and distribute them to my sales team to follow up to see if they wanted to book for the next year, but using the adding a new task just to automatically remind, uh, the, the event manager is is definitely the more modern, fresh way to do it, and it just keeps everyone tight and on track. Absolutely. Cool. So we're gonna toss cameras back on. And I just took a look and it looks like all of our questions uh, have been answered by Chris and Lauren. So thank you so much for uh, helping us, Chris and Lauren, today. Uh, if you ever do have some follow-up questions uh, later today or whenever, feel free to reach out directly to your account manager. Uh, and then I always encourage new users to check out the help and question tab within Triple C as well. We have a fantastic uh, support team that's always available uh, for your access. If you quit, click on the help and question tab, <laughs> internet's going pretty slow today, there it goes. Uh, the online chat is a fantastic way to have direct uh, access to support. Check out any of our online webinars, uh, interactive guides. If you ever wanna dip back into Triple C University as a refresher, you're welcome to do that. And you can always submit a help ticket as well.
But that's what we've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to future sessions uh, with all of you and please stay safe and well. Thanks guys. Cheers.